Before we begin, there are a few points that you should be aware of. In this section, we take a couple of minutes and explain what you will experience and to dispel a few myths. Firstly, there's no background music in this program. And if you like, you can feel free to put on some quiet music in the background. For some people, quiet music helps to relax the soul while distracting the conscious mind. This is a good technique if you have a very active mind. Other people, on the other hand, may prefer absolute quiet. This allows the person the freedom to focus their concentration entirely on my voice. For some, this technique is more comfortable. Remember, your subconscious mind will be open and receptive. So the important thing to remember is to do whatever you have to do to make yourself as comfortable and relaxed as possible. For those who are new to the hypnotic experience, it's simply like a little daydream. You can even keep your eyes open if you like. Or if you prefer, you can deepen your trance-like state by closing your eyes. Some people experience a greater ability to concentrate their attentions on the visualizations when their eyes are closed. But from watching TV or reading a book, we know that we can have very vivid dreams with our eyes wide open. Remember, you are always in control. This is not a stage show and you're not going to run around like a chicken or, or do anything that you wouldn't do while you are completely awake. So if the phone rings, you can answer it. If your body becomes sore, you can shift your position. This is your time. Do whatever you need to do to to make yourself comfortable, safe, and secure, to give yourself permission to allow your dreams to come true. Emotional weight loss. And doing whatever you need to do to make yourself comfortable. Take a deep breath. And relax. Remember, this time right here, right now, is your time that you've taken for yourself. There's nothing that anyone wants from you, and there's nothing that you have to do except just make yourself comfortable. Allow my words to become your words, and simply allow yourself to drift deeper and deeper. With each breath. Now, it doesn't really matter if you find yourself subconsciously aware or perhaps consciously unaware. And it also doesn't matter if you forget to remember or you remember to forget. But whenever you access this part of the mind, powerful change is always happening. And powerful change will continue whenever you find yourself thinking back to this program. Today, you're going to change your relationship with an old friend. Now, some people may think of food as a bad friend, and there definitely can be some very bad foods out there. Foods which try to harm you, just as there are bad people bad people who try to harm you. But the real problem is not food, but your relationship with food. The real problem is your emotional attachment to some old and very dear friends. Now for some people, changing your relationship with food can be very easy. And as with other relationships, when they end, Some people simply move on, often to bigger and better things. And other people, on the other hand, well, they need a little more time to collect the fallen pieces and take a personal inventory before they're ready to move on. And now, it doesn't really matter which category you might find yourself falling into. 
not because most people fall into all of the categories at some point in time, but because if you really relax your body and focus your mind, as you open your soul and pour your heart out to the universe, I wonder if you can notice that your subconscious transformation has already begun. And if you need a little more time to accept this transformation, you can revisit this program as often as you wish. And now, going into hypnosis, or any deepened state of heightened awareness, is a gradual and peaceful process. Once again, you don't have to do anything, except relax. Your mind is already open and receptive as you continue to allow my words to become your words. And in a moment, I'm going to help you access a very deep and private voice in your soul. The location of this voice is carefully hidden away to protect itself and to protect you. And at this moment, it doesn't really matter what it needs protecting from. Simply be aware that we're about to embark on a very sensitive journey. A sensitive journey that will change your life. And if you really concentrate, you will notice a change within, just as easily and effortlessly as you now notice how much more relaxed and regular your breathing has become and how perfectly still your body continues to relax, asleep, motionless, desiring only to remain perfectly motionless, as close to stillness, as close to perfection as you can possibly allow yourself to become, completely. And you must now realize that you will never be able to go back to your old eating habits, your old relationships, not because time continues to march forward and you're always changing, becoming stronger and stronger with each new day, and not because you continue to let go of the past and embrace your own future, but because whenever you relax this deeply and access this part of your mind, this hidden chamber of your soul, the only place in this whole universe strong enough to contain the cries and joys of this little voice deep within your soul. Change is always happening. Now, I don't know if you've ever noticed, but some people often find a bunch of voices inside their head. And some voices are loud and some are quiet. Some voices sound like they've been there forever, and others... Well, they just appear out of the blue. Some voices use phrases that your parents use, and some use popular buzz phrases from the media, and some phrases are in different languages, or even gibberish. And although you may not know what every voice is saying, what every part of you is trying to communicate, all voices have a dramatic effect on your subconscious. Your subconscious lets every part have its say. That's right. Your subconscious lets every part have its say. So, in a moment, I'm going to count from one to ten. And on each count, you'll take a couple of steps closer to that secret chamber deep within your soul. And to find the correct path, we start with a simple feeling, a desire, perhaps a longing for someone or something, and we follow it down. And to whatever extent that you so desire to lose weight, to have a healthy relationship with food, you will find the desire to be fit and follow those feelings into the deepest part of your mind where the change will become permanent, healthy, and, and everlasting. Remember, you don't have to do anything, except relax and, and let yourself have a little dream. 
So do whatever you need to do to completely let go and your subconscious will do the rest. So begin by imagining yourself walking down a winding path. And for some reason, everything just feels natural, so familiar and exactly as it should. And when you're ready, one, relaxing deeper and deeper, taking a few leisurely steps towards your goal, towards health and happiness, following that primal urge deeper and deeper. And I wonder if you've ever noticed that sometimes hunger can be a primal urge, sometimes taking on a life of its own, the hunger forcing you to do things that you don't feel that you want to do, like an animal. But you're not an animal. You are in control, in control of yourself and the beast within. So, too, deeper and deeper. Letting the waves of relaxation wash away your worries and fears. And three, And four, following that emotion, that desire to be fit, really allowing yourself to embrace that desire with all parts of your personality, deeper and deeper, following your path and allowing your senses to become more heightened. And five, and as you reach the halfway point, you can see two people fighting up ahead in your path. Hmm, so running up to, to get a better look, you see two parts of your personality having a big fight. And you know that this is not good. You've come so far. Why are you fighting yourself? So you take control and break up the fight Hey, why are you two fighting? And turning to the big strong part, you yell, Why are you picking on the little guy? And the big strong part replies, I'm here to protect you. You told me to stop everyone who is on this path. Now you know deep down inside, that somewhere along the line, this is true. This big part of you, was instructed to block parts of your soul from reaching your inner self. And you know, somewhere along the line, this may have been necessary, for whatever reason. And it doesn't really matter why, because we're not here to judge the past. You're here to move forward. But he did the job too well. The good parts aren't getting through. The parts that balance your life health, wealth, happiness, self-love, self-worth, and most importantly, self-control, aren't getting through. This part of you now needs a new job. So find yourself now saying these words to your big, strong protector. I understand. You're doing a great job. But now, I have a new job for you. I want you to protect all of the good parts. I want you to let them through, to help us be happy and healthy. And because he wants you to be happy and successful, he naturally agrees. And he naturally agrees because it's natural to agree with yourself when you're trying to be good to yourself. So the two parts give each other a hug and, and then they run off into the distance. And you can take a moment and marvel at, at how simple and fast powerful change can happen when you know who to talk to and what to say. 
And now continuing along your journey, settling down, relaxing your body even deeper, relaxing your mind. And six, deeper and deeper. Allow yourself to feel a new natural flow of energy it's pulsing through your body. And seven, deeper and deeper. Eight, almost there. And nine, turning a corner on the path. You again see that big, strong part of you beating up on a smaller part. So you run up and break it up. Stop fighting each other, you yell. Now you know that the bigger part is programmed to help the smaller parts. So this time, you turn to the smaller part and ask, What's going on? And he says, It's not my fault. You told me to go to the inner chamber whenever I'm upset or scared. You soon realize that to completely reprogram yourself for success, to change your relationship with food, you're going to have to get everyone on the same side. Fortunately, with the help of this program, you can access this part of your mind whenever you find your thoughts fighting each other. So, you know that the smaller part is trying to help you in its own way, and there are things in this world which can cause fear and worry. So ask the bigger part to protect everyone, all parts of you, and make sure that the smaller part knows that they can now feel safe. There is someone looking out for them. And wait for them to hug each other and let them go on their way. And sometimes it just feels good to relax and allow your mind to make peace with yourself. So continuing on your journey into your soul, feeling so good and at peace with yourself and the world around you. And finally, 10, deep, deep hypnosis, letting go. This is your time and today is your day. And as you're resting there so peacefully, so peacefully that you wouldn't even disturb a feather, I wonder if you can now imagine your path opening up into a large clearing. And in this clearing is a large table covered with your favorite foods, a giant banquet of delights, which begin to overwhelm your senses. So many sweets and desserts and meats and pastas and rice dishes, all the foods in the past that you've gorged yourself with, all of the foods and delights that you've wanted to sample, you've wanted to make part of your body, to turn into stored energy, yes, to turn into fat, and lots of fat, so that people know that you've eaten these things. All delights to the senses, foods that you didn't even know that you wanted to eat, to pig out on. Absolutely everything from every part of your life is represented here. Baby food, fruits and vegetables, and meats and poultry and fish and eggs and starches and sugars and salts and fats, everything. All junk foods and fast foods and things that you don't even like to eat. Food that's good for you and food that's bad for you. And seated along both sides of this banquet table are all parts of your personality all parts of your mind and soul, everyone full of emotion. And there are happy parts and sad parts, and some parts are shy, and some are outgoing. Everyone's here. And it feels good to have everyone, all of your parts together, and at peace with each other. Now you know that at this banquet, if you really wanted, 
You could eat anything and everything that you wanted to feast on. Just like in the past when you were fattening yourself like a Christmas goose. In fact, I wonder if there were times in the past, perhaps more times than you've forgotten to remember, when there were parts of you that would take too much food to eat. There are a lot of people who take too much food than their body can handle. People who take second and third helpings. Disgusting people who fill their plates to the sky. People who, for whatever reason, don't even realize that they're fat. And if you want to be fat and gain even more weight, and there were parts of you that did, you will continue to eat like someone who's trying to gain weight. We've all seen them. People who eat fast foods, people who eat junk food, people who are killing themselves with foods. If you want to be healthy, if you want to reverse the process once and for all, you have to have all of your parts make the commitment to eat like someone who is healthy. Now for some people, eating just feels good. We know of people who just feel good when they pig out. People who feel good eating fat foods and junk foods and eating at restaurants, especially with other people. I wonder if you can now remember a time when you consciously overate on purpose. Perhaps you took too much food and forced yourself to finish your plate when you were already full or you ate an extra chocolate, or whatever, it doesn't really matter. Just go back to that time and remember what it felt like. Did it feel good? I'll bet on some level that it felt really good, or your subconscious would never have allowed you to do it. Maybe it was a feeling of accomplishment, or it was a repressed feeling of belonging, or perhaps... It's a feeling of being in control. That's right. You are your body's keeper. You are in control of what you put into your body. It doesn't matter if you overeat one day, starve yourself the next, or if you've never tried to miss a meal or you yo-yo diet. You are your body's keeper. You are in control. The hunger monster inside is a myth, a fallacy, a lie. You are in control of what you put into your body. So feel your personal power growing with each breath. You are in control. I wonder if you can take a moment and now make a toast at the head of the table. Find yourself saying to your many parts that you're really pleased that they're finally getting along, and you're proud of everyone. But it's time for a change. You are now making a new commitment to yourself to be healthy once and for all. This is your life. This is your day. So, repeating after me in your own mind, I am in control. I am in control. And to whatever extent that you so desire to live your life, you will now accept that you are in control of what you put into your body. This is your time that you've chosen for yourself. This is your life. Your parts will do whatever you tell them to do. So tell them to reject junk food and excessive eating. You might not always be in charge of the events around you, but you are always in control of what you put into your body. You are in control, and it feels wonderful. So settling down even deeper. And now as you're letting your body settle into a heightened state of deep and relaxation, have you ever noticed that misery loves company? You might experience this every day and not even know it. Misery loves company. Fat people 
find each other. You're aware of many fat families, and they all have bad eating habits. They're all fat, together. And the thin person in a fat family is called the black sheep, even though they're the only one who's healthy. Have you ever noticed groups of fat people? It's true. Fat people have fat friends. Whether they consciously realize this or not, they're fat together. And these people are controlling each other. They're actually helping each other to be fat. And to them, on some level, well, it just feels good. And you may have, have even heard them making fun of skinny people making fun of athletic people, and making fun of healthy people. But not you. Not today. Today is different. Today is your day. Today is the day that you chose to take back control of your body and your life. If there are fat parts of you sitting together at this table, break them up. Make them sit apart and feel them beginning to melt away the pounds. There is strength in numbers, so separate them. And notice the subtle shift inside your subconscious. Feel your desire to be thin, grow stronger and stronger. This is your journey. This is your life, and this is your day. You are in control of what you eat. Now allowing yourself to forget to remember the bad habits and bad feelings associated with food. That's right, forgetting to remember. Remembering to leave that part of you in the past. Because today, you remember that you are your body's keeper. And it just feels good to reclaim control of your body and your mind and your soul. No longer a slave to temptation, but free and alive, living for your own body. And finally, in control of your own feelings. And taking a moment for yourself as you're seated at this banquet, imagine all of the excuses that you used to use. Excuses that you've heard other people use and excuses that you didn't even know are a part of you right now. Perhaps you once believed that you weren't pretty enough to be fit or you weren't smart enough. Maybe you thought that it's a part of your genes. And how many times have you heard that age-old excuse that you're fat because your parents are fat? And then see these people pig out on junk food. Many people blame other people for their weight because they're hiding from their own responsibility. But not you. Not today. Today you take back control of what you put into your body. Sometimes people try and force you to eat extra. You've heard it. Make mommy happy and finish your plate. Or be a good girl or boy and eat up. Some people falsely associate eating with exercise. And they overeat because they had a big workout. Or even worse, because they think they're going to have a big workout. Can you really have a hard workout if you just pigged out? You're only fooling yourself. You're being irresponsible. You gave up control to the excuse. So, take a moment and right now think of all the excuses that you've used for overeating. Pigging out. Excuses for eating junk food fast food, eating at restaurants instead of preparing your own food, excuses that you didn't even know that you're using for not planning your meals, 
all of your meals. Remember, if you're not planning for success, you're planning for failure. What are you planning for? And today's your day. So let go of the excuses and allow yourself to be free. You are your body's keeper. You are responsible for your own health, your own well-being, your own happiness. You are in control of what you put into your body, of what you put into your mind, and especially how you feed your soul. And there is nothing that anyone can say or do to change the fact that this is your decision. This is your life. You know that if you wanted to, you could eat everything on this table. And there were parts of you that wanted to eat everything on this table. These parts are not good or bad. They just want to eat everything. And they used to come up with millions of excuses. Really good excuses to get their way. To wrestle back control. Pigging out. And now everyone has these parts inside. But you already know that these parts will do whatever you tell them to do. And I wonder if you really concentrated whenever you have those cravings. If perhaps you're misreading your body's feelings. Maybe your body is not telling you that you have hunger. But perhaps you're feeling lonely or out of control or whatever. That's for you to decide as you continue to make peace with your mind, your body, and your soul. You are your body's keeper. From this moment on, all cravings, real or imagined, strengthen your control. Cravings of any kind, physical, emotional, or psychological, always make you stronger and stronger. And you may now be surprised to find yourself enjoying this feeling of being in control of your thoughts, in control of your feelings, and in control of your body. So much that you can now imagine yourself getting up from this table without touching any food, allowing temptation to pass by without seeing you. And it feels so good to be in control. You are your body's keeper. So, as you're now so peacefully aware of the changes that you've undergone, you can give yourself permission to drift off into a deep sleep and dream about how exciting your life has now become after these few moments of this hypnotic rest. Or you can slowly and gently allow yourself to return to a full consciousness and take on the rest of the day with a smile from your heart as you embrace life completely healed and ready to embrace the new you.